And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. There are dexterity games, games where I guess the most famous would be Jenga, where you try to pull the piece out without the whole tower collapsing. There's a lot of dexterity games, but very rarely is a dexterity game mixed with a strategic level. Yeah, there's some strategy, pull this piece here, pull this piece, but can we add more strategy to that? Well, that's what Cornerstone tries to do. Now, if you look here, you'll see that Cornerstone is a big box. Now, normally when I say that these boxes are this big, they're usually oversized. They don't need to be this big. Is Cornerstone the same way? Well, let's look inside and find out. All right, here's the box of Cornerstone. And as we take off the lid, we can see inside are four big bags and one small bag. Each of these big bags is full of a pile of wooden pieces. Very good wooden pieces. I, they're high quality and they're very, very light, easy to move around. They're formed into a checkerboard pattern of a neutral color and the color of that piece. As you can see, each of the bags has the same thing. So we basically have four different colors, red, green, black, and what is this elusive fourth color? Blue. But that's not all that's included with the game, this huge pile of blocks. But we also have a smaller bag, and in that bag comes a neutral colored piece two dice, and a bunch of small wooden people who, for the sake of this uh, review, we're going to call these meeples. This is how the game looks when you start. You use the neutral piece. The meeples are preparing to make their vicious climb to the top. One player starts the game, and he takes a pair of dice. He rolls those dice, and he looks at the numbers rolled. For example, here he rolls a four or five. He then, this player is going to take a level four piece or a level five piece, and build with it. Now, uh, some of the pieces, it doesn't matter really, but for like, for example, the level five piece, you have two different versions that you can use, and you can use either one. When you're placing a piece, you can place it any way that you want. However, it has to match the colored versus neutral pattern that's already on the board. This is not allowed. Uh, neither is something uh, like that. You have to match it exactly. There's no rules about whether it has to, it, it can hang off or not. However, obviously, if it's not going to stay on, you can't do it. Once you do build it, though, let's say this is how I build it, then you take your meeple and you can climb up the tower. Now, he can only move up one level at a time. He can also only move onto your colored pieces. So later on in the game, let's say this piece is like this. The black piece can't move up. He can move up here, but he cannot move there. However, if the blue piece is here, he couldn't move into that blue piece of space, so he, but he could move all the way over here and then go up one level. Now, there is the possibility as the game progresses and as more pieces are added that you're going to run into problems where your meeple can't move, then you have to go back to the bottom and start over again. So in one essence, this is a dexterity game because if you make the tower fall, then the game is over. But at the same time, you're trying to find a way to get your piece to the top, maneuvering around other players' colors, uh, and setting pieces up to block theirs. It doesn't necessarily seem like it, but this is a very, very interactive game. Because as you're adding pieces to this, you are deliberately trying to stop your opponent's pieces. Trying to mess them up. Trying to make them go somewhere else. And knowing how to place your pieces in such a way that you're following the rules and helping your own meeple get higher, while at the same time blocking other players is really interesting. Now the tower that I'm building here is really nothing like what a tower will look like per se because I'm just putting pieces down and trying to make sure as I set them down that I'm following the rules. But in essence, you're going to be building, and so you'll see probably one-fourth of the tower will be blue, green, uh, red, and black with some variations, pieces intruding into the other corners of the tower. But the tower can look really neat, and I would have to zoom farther out once all the pieces are on it. There are a couple more rules to the game. If a player ever rolls doubles, where they roll the same number, then they can choose any piece, not just the numbers that they've rolled. Also, if a player rolls, let's say they roll three and two, and they no longer have any three or two pieces left, then they have to take one of their pieces out of the game. And this will help keep the game moving at a reasonable clip. 
and so that the game ends. The game will end when a player has no pieces left to place, or when one of the players knocks the tower over. In this instance, let's say the tower is knocked over, you can see that the orange meeple here at the top, or the red meeple here at the top, is would win. The blue meeple is second place. However, if the red guy is the piece and he's adding one to it, and he's the one who knocks it over, then blue would win. If you knock it over, you cannot win. And I do enjoy that facet of the game. You can even play with some challenging rules with team play. I'm not... Uh, the challenging rules, I understand that they're there to make things more interesting. That's where you can't put a piece, that you can't take one of your pieces and put it next to a color of another piece. For example, this would be legal, but this would be not because I'm touching their color. That's an interesting way, and I guess if people got more advanced into the game, I'd be more interested in playing that way, but I'm pretty happy with the basic rules as are. All right, well, that's basically the game in a nutshell. And I'll say right up that I like it. I like dexterity games, but this one is the thinking man's dexterity game. Uh, you're still going to have the thrill of watching someone put a piece on and having the whole thing collapse. Uh, but at the same time, placing pieces in such a way so that you can maneuver your, your meeple to the top is a, a lot of fun. Now, the problem with it being a combination of a dexterity and strategy games means if you don't like one or the other, you may not like the game. If you're just looking for a fun game to put pieces on top of each other, the strategy is going to throw you off, especially if you play with someone who takes a long time to make their turns. And if you're someone who's looking for a strategy game, but you have shaky hands, or you're just not a big fan of dexterity, you're not going to enjoy this. But if you like both, like I do, then this is a good mix between the two. I really find it a lot of fun. It's at its best with four, although it works well with two or three. Uh, and just figuring out how to put the pieces down. The tower ends up looking different each time, and it looks really good. High-quality components, a good rule set. Thumbs up for Cornerstone. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.